Hey everybody, what's up, what's up, yours truly, uh, Dave Nation, coming to you live. Yes, we're coming here to do live. And we're going to do a special audio, this is a podcast, I know you guys appreciate my podcast, near and dear to me, and it's always near and de dear to me, it's either through video or audio, I'm going to be doing it, I'll be doing it for the rest of my life, for, until I pass away. Uh, uh, some case like that, but uh, nonetheless, this is going to be a podcast. I have topics to run by for everybody out there. Now, the immigration system that uh, the United States is always talking about—they're uh, having these migrants from the uh, uh, from other parts of the world, and they they're going to build a wall. Uh, Donald Trump uh, keeps saying to himself all the time, he's going to build a wall. He's going to build a damn wall for all you Americans out there. Uh, yes, uh, you're gonna, you sp uh, spoke to uh, uh, Donald Trump real loud and proud about building a wall. He's going to build a damn wall, and it's going to cost him a lot of money. It will cost him a lot of money uh, to build a damn wall. And uh, no question about it, there will be a wall at the, at the southern border. Um, no question about it. So all you migrants out there, uh, be forewarned, because Donald Trump's going to uh, build the flipping wall that you guys been asking about. Uh, one other thing. One other thing that um, they're putting uh, kids in cages, or um, or uh, migrants in cages, or kids in cages, wherever the case may be, at the um, detention center, wherever it is. Um, a few people from the United States doesn't like it. They were saying all through this whole entire week, they don't like kids in cages or uh, the uh, immigrants from other plant, uh, other you know, other um, countries. And they're not liking it. All week they were at the um, the Capitol Hill talk and complaining about kids being in cages and uh, and everybody the migrants from other uh, parts of the world. And they're not liking that notion. They're not liking that notion at all. Um, but the zero tolerance that uh, 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 Jeff is saying, uh, uh, whatever his name is, whatever his name is, uh, he it, it's a zero tolerance kind of thing. Uh, so they're. They're treating kids like uh, animals in a way. Uh, what they're trying to do, and it's not good. They're uh, uh, Cortez, whatever her name, her name is. She's really upset about the whole thing. Uh, she thinks that kids are drinking out of toilets. Uh, I don't agree with all her ways what she goes about in the world about all those things that she says. Cortez, whatever that uh, the senator. I think uh, I think she's a senator. But Cortez, I know what she looks like in uh, terms of her face. Um, she, think, she thinks that the world is going to end in 12 years. That's totally wrong what she said. I don't agree with that. Uh, I totally agree. You can agree or disagree, but I totally disagree on what, what she said about the world is going to end in 12 years. The world is not going to end in 12 years. Everybody knows that around the planet. She just speak, uh, she just uh, commenting on uh, what she thinks she needs to say. Uh, I think she was low off base by saying the uh, world is going to end in 12 years. That was to uh, totally wrong. Totally flipping wrong. Anyway, um, what else? Oh, by the way, this Cory Booker, the Senator Cory Booker, I've got to drop some names here. Senator Cory Booker, he's all for justice for all type of guy. Um, he was just talking a little bit about today, uh, you know, all about politics stuff. You know all politics is. In the wash in the uh, media, uh, in the... at the uh, Capitol Hill, sometimes they like to say all about stu uh, stuff about politics stuff. Senator Cory Booker, he's the uh, guy from, I think, from Detroit, if I'm not mistaken, or uh, uh, I forget where. Anyway, uh, speaking of Detroit, um, a lot of people, um, their city is like a ghost town. I kid you not, I kid you not. They raised their taxes in Detroit, and everybody left that, that grateful city where Detroit, where they made trucks and everything. Um... They, a lot of people left that city because due to higher taxes, uh, they raised their taxes. Does the people who were lived there, who lived there, raised their taxes and everybody just ran to the hills? I mean, literally ran to the hills. They moved out of the Detroit area, and it's now it's a ghost town. If you ask me, it's uh, very much a ghost town. It's like, um, it's like, um, well, if you go down there, you know what I mean. Um, they're trying to get back that city again, but it was a ghost town a while back because they raised their taxes in that city, in a Detroit city. Uh, everybody left that city because of higher taxes. And uh, I'm just saying for you people out there, be careful of politicians that say that they want to raise your taxes. You just run to the hills. Run out of that city, run out of the hills. 
because um, that's what they did in Detroit. Just to learn a lesson from Detroit. Um, now it's a ghost town in Detroit. People, not mistaken, I've seen videos on YouTube about it. It's a ghost town. Uh, some uh, some politician raised their taxes, then they everybody in the entire Detroit area left town. They left the town. Uh, I mean, not to uh, not because of the uh, of the uh, motor uh, city. It's because uh, somebody in that Detroit area raised their taxes. The politicians raised their taxes. Mayor maybe raised their taxes. That's why everybody left that city because due to the fact they raised their taxes. And uh, uh, we've got to learn a lesson from Detroit. Um, uh, so we're not going to have cities just like that who raise their taxes. One other thing I've got to, uh, got to say to my lovely fans out there and uh, Dave Nation of all Dave nations, this is just a podcast. I'm just winging with some um, topics here. Oh, by the way, the disarray um, or the um, uh, we are the people mentality in Washington, D.C., they have this uh, notion called the uh, the uh, First Amendment. Um, these are videos on YouTube. I don't know if you guys have seen these videos on YouTube. They have a First Amendment audits. They do First Amendment audits. That means you go out and film uh, and about uh, the laws that they have about photography. Um, now, in the United States, you're allowed to do photography right from right from um, uh, the the. Uh, uh, sidewalks. Sidewalks are public. You can't go into private property areas. Uh, that you can't do. That's the United States. Uh, what, what you can, when you're on the sidewalk, it's a public uh, sidewalk. It's a public sidewalk. If you and I, as people on this planet, walk on the sidewalk, and it's like a public sidewalk. It's like totally a public sidewalk. Everybody should know that. Um, what that entails mean uh, whatever my eyes see, we can film. Uh, that means when we're on the sidewalk, we can film anything. There's a few people on YouTube that do that sort of thing. Uh, but you got to be a little careful doing it. Um, but a lot of people in the United States do that. There are a few v people are doing that on YouTube videos. And uh, not getting in trouble, but uh, they, uh, there's laws about that. Whereas sidewalks is public, but when you want to get onto the private property with a camera, it's a little, little dodgy. Um, they, they have laws for that. That's in the United States. I don't know about here in Canada. But uh, you see, I see a few videos about that. And um, it's just astounding what people can do. Oh, by the way, I've seen videos about people um, cleaning drains. These are drains. The drain systems uh, that are around the cities and stuff. Uh, this one guy on YouTube who cleans all the drains. He used a power washer. He used the power washers to the drain system. Uh, really powerful uh, um, power washer all through the drain system. Um, and then gets all that gook out of those drain system. And it's fascinating. It's very fascinating. i, I got to admit that it's very fascinating seeing those videos that a guy like that could do something like that. Uh, make a difference for a lot of people out there. And we got to clean this city. I mean, city can be very dirty, but we want it to be clean. Uh, city's got to be clean. I, I mean, we got to set an example for a next generation of people. Um, and one one other thing that I uh, that I want to talk about is uh, Nancy Pelosi. I can't uh, go out of this podcast without talking about Nancy Pelosi. Uh, she's the Speaker of the House, and a lot of you people should know that because you've heard her on TV. Uh, yeah, she's Speaker of the House, as far as I know. Uh, you can ask her if you want. Um, she's Speaker of the House, as far as I know. Um, but, uh, yeah, she does these uh, press conferences, I think, weekly. Um, she doesn't do them... Uh, she does them Wednesdays or Thursdays of every week. And um, she just talks about everything to do with Donald Trump or the, the day at hand. And uh, she goes uh, pretty much... Pretty much, she just speaks her mind, and I, 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 I really appreciate that from her. I really do. But sometimes, sometimes she gets a little, a little upset. Uh, a while back, she was saying about Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump is not above the law, sort of thing. And nobody's above the law. Uh, we we've heard that so many times. Even uh, the president of the United States, he's not even above the law. Nancy Pelosi wants to drive that to everybody, um, to that the president is not above the law. Whatever. President does <laughs> it just it, it, she kind of drives that notion out there uh, for the people on TV. Um, 
And, uh, yeah, I like Nasty Pelosi. Don't get me wrong. I do like her a bit. Uh, this latter part of this week, I do like her a bit. Uh, these politicians are just speaking out of their, what they feel, that they feel that's right for them. And um, I can't just uh, go out of this podcast speaking about uh, Kamala Harris. Um, now, she wants to do the universal health care. She's talking about this thing called universal health care. She can't get the words out right. Um, she talks about the health care in the United States. And um, the health care should be universal. Um, that's, that's clearly what, what she's trying to say. Um, she wants to have universal health care. I think uh, Bernie Sanders has been saying it too as well. Uh, that was the, they're just talking to their base. They're, they're based uh, to their people, to their what they want to hear. Oh, they reached, uh, they reached the $15 uh, wagers. That uh, means uh, uh, they raised the um, minimum wage to fifteen dollars uh, just today. They voted on it. That's what they went put it in the Senate. They voted on it. It's now fifteen dollars an hour. That's in the United States, not here in Canada. But fifteen dollars minimum wage. I didn't say you go check it on TV. They did raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars. Uh, that will help out with a lot of people out there in the world. Uh, certainly, if you're at a job somewhere, um, uh, you get fifty dollars uh, working hours. That means fifteen dollars. I don't know whatever place you're working at. Fifty dollars. That's they. Uh, even Bernie Sanders said that a while back about that whole fifteen dollars. She's uh, he's for the one percenters out there. Um, go ask that for him because he said that a while back in his uh, rallies. Um, uh, oh, by the way, by the way, Kent. Uh, go doing it out of this podcast without talking about Donald Trump. Donald Trump, who you see as a president of the United States, he's he did a rally yesterday. And the fans and the, uh, the fans at the arena, uh, he was talking about one of the four uh, women that he uh, didn't like to uh, talk about. And there was a tweets on the weekend that he kind of uh, talked about. He said, uh, "If you don't like the United States, you can leave the United States." If you don't want to live here, you can li uh, li go somewhere else. Like, go somewhere else. Uh, he's not pulling strings, you know. He's not telling you that if you like this, if you like the United States, you can stay in the United States. But if you want to leave the United States, you can't leave the United States. There's no string attached. So if you don't like the United States, you can move and leave the United States and go other places. That's what Donald Trump is really trying to say. Um, and um, Donald Trump is pretty good. We like him or not. He's going to be staying there. We want four more years of Donald Trump. Um, I don't have any opinion about the guy. All I'm saying is the United States, um, the people who call in the radio stations and TV stations don't like Donald Trump at all. I mean, you can hear the morning shows when they do a call radio program. They, a few of them, few of the callers who call C-SPAN don't like Donald Trump at all. I mean, uh, they want to, <laughs> they say every nasty word, out there. They just want to get rid of this guy because he's a liar. They say Donald Trump is a liar. I'm not saying it. The people who call up C-SPAN are not liking Donald Trump at all. Uh, they're, they're telling Donald Trump that he's a liar and all these sort of nasty words about him. Uh, and um, some people are for Democrats and some people are from uh, the other side of the, uh, the spectrum. And um, the Democrats, they sir, sir, er, they're really good this week. This week, I haven't heard very much about the Democrats this week. Uh, but Nancy Pelosi, and um, I don't know if I what I can say about anybody else that's uh, at the White House. Oh, CNN, CNN's doing pretty good these days, folks. I don't know if you guys have talked. Uh, oh, by the way, in case some, uh, in case you guys are wondering, uh, Jim Costa, Jim Costa, who is a white, who used to be the White House correspondent. Um, I was just laughing about it this week about his uh, brush with uh, Donald Trump last year in October, sometime around October. Donald Trump had a press conference where he was going off about a lot of things. And Jim Acosta, who is Jim Acosta, who is the White House correspondent, uh, just asked the simple question about the migrants who came from other world. At this point blank, asked Donald Trump, at the pony, but Donald Trump played it down to Jim Acosta and really let him know that he should be working at CNN and just get, uh, you know, just you should get him fired at you know CNN. Uh, but 
some really nasty things. I was surprised that Jeff Costa really kept his composure. I'm really surprised about that. Really surprised about that he kept his composure. <laughs> where Donald Trump kind of played it down on it. Um, and, um, uh, I mean, even the lady who grabbed the microphone off his hands... I really didn't like Jim Costa's answer. I don't know why, but I saw it last year, and I'm, I was laughing about it this week. <laughs> a year later, you know, like a year later to it. Uh, but uh, it was really funny. I think that, uh, like I was saying a few days ago, it was like an epic moment uh, in Donald Trump's life that Jim Costa has to ask the right questions to him. Um, oh, by the way, Jim Costa, in case you guys are wondering, does have a book out. He does have a book, a novel book out about him. Um, go check out in the bookstore. I checked out this week. He does have a book out. Chicken McCosta, a uh, White House correspondent, um, does have a book. Um, and he, I think he wrote it. I think he wrote the book. And he had an uh, exclusive interview just recently about his book. And, uh, oh, by the way, in case you guys are wondering... About the Area 51. Now, I've heard uh, rumors on Facebook that they want to storm Area 51. This is the, uh, uh, case you, uh, uh, in case you guys are wondering what Area 51 is, it's a secret naval base. That's in the Nevada area. Um, that's near Groom Lake. Uh, a lot of people should know. You can find out where that is. You can just look up Google Maps, type in Area 51. It'll tell you where that is. Uh, but these people... I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Uh, bear this in mind, people. I'm not going to storm Area 51 because uh, they have security people down there. Uh, they have camel dudes down there. They're going to have the army down there. They're just people uh, creating the stir that they want to storm Area 51. This is the where aliens are, if there's aliens or UFOs hidden there. Um I don't know if you guys have seen it. Uh, there's a lot of TV shows about this Area 51 place. Um, not yesterday or the other day. There's been several uh, TV shows about it since the early 90s, uh, mid-90s, uh, about Area 51. Um, there was a uh, long believed that uh, aliens or alien craft-like vehicles from the sky uh, have landed there. The best person you would love to talk about uh, aliens or UFOs would be Bob Lazar. In my right mind, those people who want to storm Area 51 better just ask Air, uh, Bob Bazaar or maybe Barry yet, maybe Donald Trump should do that. Uh, let's, let's just see if they could get in trouble by storming Area 51. I sure don't. But uh, these people who want to get a Facebook going and have a billions of people storm Area 51, I think it's well advised you guys don't do that. Um... I've seen videos on Area 51. Um, I don't want to go down there because they're too a security uh, thing uh, down there. I've seen videos on it uh, for a while, very long time about it. And um, um, they're actually, when you get to uh, a certain area, if you drive down to this, uh, this dirt road, it's not really a dirt road, but a uh, uh, rock road, or this, you know, it's not like a paved road. It's a very long road to get there, by the way, folks. Uh, but, yeah, it's in Nevada area. You have to drive down to this really long road to get there. Um, and, um, and videos have been shown about this. And people on Facebook want to gather a 1,000 people in, uh, in uh, Los Angeles area to storm Area 51. Now, the Area 51, uh, uh, Bob Bazaar, who used to work there at Area 51... This is a long time ago. This is mid-80s or something. Um, you still work there. You can ask him about that. And um, um, he'll tell you what uh, um, what UFOs or identified flying objects are all about. Um, or aliens, as they call it. Like little green men or aliens or whatever the terminology that people would use. Um, but like I said... I would well advise to you people out there who want to storm Area 51, it's well advised. If you were to ask a lot of people, I would say it's well advised you guys don't do that. I know people on Facebook want to uh, get a thousand people to do that. But if you do do that, that will be astounding. I don't say you guys be doing that, but um, just, just guys don't do that, okay? Promise me you guys, 
it, only if only if Area Fifty One wants to open their doors to the public, I say you could do that. But until then, I don't think you should be you guys out there in the world should be doing that. Uh, that's my recommendation. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so don't guys don't do that, okay? Promise me, you people out there in the social media world, don't storm Area Fifty One. It's well advised. It's uh, as they say, it's not well advised to do that. Uh, unless Area 51 wants to open their doors to the public, then you could easily go to Area 51. Until then, you guys can't do that because there's uh, camel dudes, they're so-called, in quotation, camel dudes, uh, that drive up and down Area 51. I've, I've heard about this sort of thing um, on, video, on YouTube videos. Um, and they have security uh, cameras around the perimeter of Area 51. Uh, so it's tight security. It's like uh, it, they have really tight security around Area 51. Um, so even if you, uh, millions of you people do that, I don't think you guys should do that. That's my recommendation. Uh, unless Area 51 wants to open their doors to the public. And only if they will to do that. Uh, so the public can see Area 51. Um, but until then, I would advise you guys to do that. It's just my recommend. I've seen few people on YouTube that want to do that sort of thing, but it's well advised. Uh, people will tell you that a uh, few a uh, few YouTube videos. Um, one other thing. One other thing before I get off this uh, podcast, so called podcast. Um, I want to say to my lovely fans out there, I'm glad you guys stick with me on these podcasts, uh, um, audio things, because I, I just want to speak my mind. I just want to speak my mind. It's the only chance I get to speak my mind. Oh, and by the way, in case you guys are not, um, I want to drop a few, a few names about YouTubers out there. This um, one particular, he goes by the name of uh, Jesse, who a lot of people don't know. He goes by the name of Juggernugger, uh, uh, Mick Juggernugger. And um, he has a website called Storyfire. Now, a lot of people don't know who Storyfire. Go check the website. He has tons of videos out there. And he just promoted heavily. Uh, he's a, he was at VidCon the other day, like I think a few days ago. He was at VidCon, some um, and uh, yeah, I just watch his videos periodically, but not as much as I used to do. But um, he's just this famous guy on YouTube that uh, everybody tends to like, and he's just he's just being lovable. He's just being lovable at the moment, and that's great. That's great. He's kind of his fan base, and that's great. That's wonderful. Um, I just I just like to see him. Just to be on camera is is fascinating to me. Um, if I can see him on you, if I can see him on YouTube and uh, videos like that, that's just great. Uh, I don't have to go meet him or anything. I just as long as I see his beautiful face on a YouTube uh, video, and he has epical videos, epical videos. Um, they were great, and you should guys give a thumbs up. And by the way, like his videos. By the way, he's going to tell you he's uh, you should like his videos. Um, and by the way, go try go. Go try out his uh, story fire. Um, that's what he uh, created. He created a, a website where you can create your own stories. According to him, you can create your own stories on Story Fire. Um, and uh, yeah, it's through an app, through an uh, uh, through an app that you guys will appreciate that. And uh, one other thing um, that I want to talk about that uh, a lot of people don't know. That if your loved one has passed away, you could uh, talk to these people in the afterlife. Uh, the the names that get thrown around are spirit communication. Now I'll give you a description of what spirit communication spirit communication is all about. Um, if you guys don't know already, um, if you want to speak to a loved one who's passed on in the afterlife, there's ways you could do that. Um, there's other ways. There's really tons and tons of ways you could do that through um, uh, through digital recordings, through a spirit box. Better yet, go uh, go uh, the high, highly recommended videos you guys should watch up uh, should watch is uh, Huff Paranormal. Huff Paranormal. Go check out his name on YouTube. He has a YouTube channel, and what he does is um, he has a, a Panasonic digital recorder. Uh, that uh, that got modified to talk to the the uh, the well not the dead but spirit communication as he would say it 
uh, and he comes with love. He he starts off by saying, "I come by love." Uh, we, we all we're all spiritual beings, okay. Once we passed on in this lifetime, we're all spiritual beings. That means only our spiritual self doesn't die off. Our body does, but our spiritual self stays in the plane, in the world today. Um, so, the only way we can speak to our loved ones in the afterlife through a lot of means, a lot of, a lot, well, not a lot of means, but a lot of uh, techniques, shall we say. Um, the stuff that we got on this world are digital recorders, if you ever have one. The other thing that we you could do is I highly recommend it is get a spirit box. Some uh, communication that talks beyond the grave, beyond the afterlife, or beyond the dead. Um, uh, now, remember, you might not get a response back. Once you, um, with the right questions, you should just practice at it if you want to practice to talk to your loved ones in the afterlife. And when they go in the great beyond, that's when you can talk to your loved ones in the afterlife. As as people of this planet, when we're still alive, we can talk to our loved ones who passed on in the afterlife. Uh, through a lot of means, for a lot of ways. Um, and that's why, that's why um, you could do that. You could do that. Or th there's other ways you could do about it that if you're capable of doing it, it's called um, spiritual reading. They call it spiritual readings. Um, or um, what, what's the right terminology they would say? Um, uh, spiritual reading. They do a spiritual reading about a person on the afterlife. You're capable of doing that sort of thing. Um, they read people beyond the grave, beyond the afterlife. And you want to talk to the loved ones in the afterlife. And you got to have this capability to doing that. Uh, not a lot of people have this capability. We're supposed to have this capability, but we don't. Uh, that's why a lot of people who want to do this sort of thing could do this, could do this. Um, I've tried so many times doing this sort of thing, but it, it may not work out for anybody else out there. Um, I just, I just, I'm really, really surprised that, that people could do this sort of thing. When my friend passed away last year, it was really devastating for a lot of people. I mean, not, including me as well, but a lot of other people on social media. But um, that's why it's very hard for me to come to grips that he's gone in the afterlife. And uh, it's just, it's just, I, I'm just dumbstruck that he's gone. And um, I don't know if it's sad for a lot of other people. And um, we're all in this world to. Uh, we're all in this world to create a lot of things, to do a lot of things in this world. Um, God sent us to do something on this planet. We're messengers of God. We're essentially messengers of God. Um, God sent us message. If you pray, as a lot of churchgoers would say, you need to pray. Pray for the prayer. Or pray for the prayer. Um, do a strong prayer. Say, okay... The example I would go by, this say, God, where where should I be in my life? Where sh where should you take me in my direction of my life? Just ask God. The best way you can put it is ask God, where should I take my career in? Because uh, do the, the ultimate prayer. Ask God. Just say a little prayer to God. God, uh, where should I take my direction in my own life? I need direction. Sometimes... We all fall from grace. And sometimes we need God's assistance. Or God's... God will speak to us in different ways. In different ways in our lives. Uh, you may not see that. But God talk to uh, God will talk to us in many ways. In our life. In our careers. Even in, even in the afterlife. Um, we're just messengers of God. We just send messages out there to our fellow people, our fellow people, our fellow man, our fellow children. Uh, children of the world are like God's children. God's children, if you reference that, uh, children are God's children, okay? Essentially that. Um, once children have gone over to the uh, great beyond, um, they're God's children. Uh, you know, uh, people have questions about that. We're, uh, and people are a little scared. If you're a little scared of being... 
uh, in the afterlife and passing away, I'm scared as well. I, I'm scared as heck. When I pass away, I'm going to be scared. Um, and I should be scared passing away or passing away or stuff like that. But I do have this, essentially this, you know, we all grow up to be alive. We're not here to pass away or anything. We grow up to be 100 years old, at least 100 years old. Uh, God has a plan for this planet of us. He died for our sins. God, Jesus, Lord of Lord, Lord of Savior, has died for our sins. He's done everything that you and I and the whole entire world has done. Uh, he, uh, he, he's done. He died at the cross, like pe many people would say, with the church or the Bible. Um, and we're we're just we're just messengers on this planet. We're here to do something on this planet. And God sends us messages. It's not the it's not the devil speaking to us. It's God. It's um, Lord and Savior, as a lot of people would say. Um, there's kids out there that don't know this sort of thing. Um, they're susceptible about many things in the world. They're susceptible about God, Jesus, and. What's there in the great beyond? They're susceptible for many things in this in their world, in their own little world, and not many people realize that. So, anyway, what I like to say for you people out there: don't give up. Don't ever give up. As my friend once said on his song, "Don't ever give up out there in the world, people. Don't ever give up." My friend did a song called "Never Give Up." Uh, I'm making sure that you people in the world. If you hear this on my podcast, never give up. As my friend had a song about it, never give up. If you have, if you have a dream, dream the ultimate dream. If if you can dream it, you can do it. Essentially, that it's as simple as that. If you can dream it, you can do it. Um, that's a, like a big, big motivator, big motivator for any kid, any adult, any sister, brother, mother, dad, everybody on this planet. Just be motivated to what you need to do. Do you need accomplished in this world? If you're a singer, do it. If you're a writer, just go write a few things. Maybe a big novel. Doesn't have to be small or big. Uh, many people write books out there, and that accomplish that. And um, my recommendation is just to just try and strive. Strive what you can do. Your strengths and weaknesses out there, people. Just do the best you could. We're not asking for a whole lot out there. Just do what you, you think that's best out there in the world. Just what's your strengths and what your weaknesses out there. We, sometimes we don't know our own strengths. We don't know our weaknesses out there. We tend to think that we're stronger than we think we are. Um, and I, I just, I just want to say these few things. I'm just not rambling off here, people. I'm just saying it from the heart. Um, and by the way... Like this whole thing about Facebook. Uh, you people out there about Facebook and your social media sites. Um, don't give up on your social media sites. Um, I think the next best thing going to come around is this uh, cryptocurrency. Now there's been all this we talked about this cryptocurrency. Now uh, that cryptocurrency means it's like Bitcoin. Uh, I've been saying that for a while. It's just another, another um, money out there. Uh, it's it's money because nowadays everybody uses credit card to bank money to you name it. But cryptocurrency is just another currency out there. Uh, but when you go shopping, it's not really available, they would say. Um, why is that? Because it's not used as of yet. They don't have the technology to use it in stores as of yet. Um, the thing that, that I like to say... Maybe one of these days we'll go into stores, maybe we'll buy something with the cryptocurrency. And we buy exchange, highs and lows, ups and downs. And it, it just boggles the mind. We're going to have the next currency on this planet. And I, for one, oh, by the way, since of cryptocurrency, a NASA, a lot of you people don't know, NASA celebrated its 50th anniversary, Paul 11. Great defeat. Great defeat that NASA did 50 years ago this week. They landed a man on the moon. They did it. 
they didn't fake it, uh, in case you guys were wondering. Now, now they put a man on the moon. Um, the president of the United States at the time in the mid-60s want to have a person go right to the moon and come back safely. They did that in the 60s. Since we're in the year 2019, they're going to accomplish that in the next four years. In 2014, and 20, I think it's in the year 2024. If I'm around, I hope to see that. But until then, I want to let you guys on something here. NASA has been around since the early 80s. Uh, since 86, if I could date myself. Since 86, since the uh, Challenge disaster. And it was just, it was just terrible. It was very terrible. So it's, it's, a, it's a milestone for uh, NASA this week. And it's uh, 50th anniversary. Now, what they do moving forward, if a lot of people would say, uh, they're going to have people go beyond this Earth orbit and go beyond. I mean, one of these days we're going to leave this planet and go to other kind of planets. I, for one, am not going to do that. I'm not going to leave this planet. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to live here, die here. That's it. That's my motive. Uh, that's my thing that I'm going to do. And no one's going to tell me otherwise. Um, I'm not going to leave this planet. Uh, I was born here. I'm going to die here. Simple as that, folks. Just like my friend did. Um, and, um, yeah. But people want to sign this up and go beyond this Lord's orbit. Um... I'm just I'm just fascinated. We passed the 50, 50, uh, 50 anniversary of the anniversary, and one other thing I got to talk about you people out there is technology. Now, in case you didn't know, they were talking about a little bit in at Capitol Hill. This was Washington D.C. at Capitol Hill. They were talking about technology. Now, technology. A lot of people don't know that Apple products or the Apple stores um, used to be a trillion dollar company trillion dollar company it's not anymore it used to be a trillion dollar company that's money folks that's money um now they're um they're talking about the debt ceiling in Washington DC as well uh, the debt uh, ceiling is talking about how, how much debt there is in the world how much we got to pay back to society um uh, now, we don't know. We don't know the number off by heart, but it's a, in the billions. The debt to society, we got to pay down the debt. A lot of people don't know how to do it. And the best thing we could do is pay off the, the country, this world, this world we live on. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's through money or through funds. I think we're going to pay down the debt. I think the world needs to pay down the debt. Um, oh, one other thing. About the tornadoes, uh, earthquakes, tornadoes and earthquakes. They had a few of them last few weeks. Um, Los Angeles had a few of them. Um, it was sad to see that. It was like 7.2 on the Richter scale. It was really, really, <laughs> it was really sad. I saw that on TV. It was really, really, really sad. 7.2 Richter scale on the earthquaking. Um, and yes, this was a little Los Angeles area. Not to laugh about it, folks, but that's that's ridiculous. Um, and uh, and um, are we are we alone on this planet? The question people should be asking themselves: Are we definitely alone on this planet? Are alien beings or aliens come and visit us? I guess we know that question by now, since all the videos on YouTube are always say that we're not alone on this planet. Like, are we only pu humans on this planet? Sort of thing. Um, my my uh, my idea to that would be, we're probably not alone on this planet. We probably have other things besides ourselves. We have, uh, we have uh, animals on this planet. We have cats and dogs. We have rabbits. We have all sorts of creatures on this planet that roam around this planet. I mean, we were left off from the de dinosaurs' age. Um... Uh, Dinosaurs came and roamed the planet, died off. This on our planet, we have dogs, cats, and uh, rabbits, and all fragile creatures. But you don't take my word for it, people. Just like I said. But anyway, I'm rambling off here. I'm I'm going on very long. I just want to say, you guys, thank you for listening to my podcast. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. There may be another one after this, but until then, see you guys on the next pass. 
I want to say ciao for now for everybody. This is David Nation signing off with a big fat kiss. And um, I really appreciate it. I'm loving this podcasting every single time I do this. I really am really, really, really liking this. Really to the max. And um, really, really liking it. So if you want to hear my podcast, oh, and by the way, this will definitely be on YouTube. And if you want to push that like button, like everybody says, push that like button. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can subscribe to my channel. And it will be on my YouTube channel. I'm not going to say the name of the YouTube channel. Just subscribe to my channel. You will see some fresh videos very shortly. Until then, see you guys on the next podcast. Ciao for now, everybody.